Okay, so for stem cells, we are using fat-derived stem cells over, over uh, bone marrow-derived because we get many more stem cells per teaspoon. There's an alternative called human umbilical stem cells. We would use those. In, there's been studies on those in knees, and they do work, but it's kind of expensive, and you're getting somebody else's blood products with that inherent communicable disease. We only use umbilical stem cells for certain disorders, particularly of the nervous system. And some of the criticisms would be, well, you don't know exactly how much to use, and you don't really know if it's growing back cartilage. One of the, some of the studies I read, they said, well, we see some increased joint space in the knee, but we don't know if it's cartilage. And then when they did an MRI, it looks like cartilage. Well, we don't really know if it's not a tumor. It could be a tumor or some nonsense like that. So let's kind of dispel that. First off, this is a study that was called a dose escalation trial for knee arthritis, and they used three different doses. They used uh, 2 million cells, 10 million cells, and 50 million cells. Okay, so big, big difference in, in doses. And what they found was that the uh, low, medium, and high dose all had the same outcome at all points between one week, three weeks, three months, and six months. So two million stem cells is probably enough, and this really gives us a big advantage because if we can go to where we're just harvesting you know, a teaspoon of fat, and the new technique we have, we can get more than two million cells out of that. It's really kind of easy for people to look and feel better without, with less risk. Now what about what's happening? The criticism had been, well, they're not really going back cartilage, you're just giving them anti-inflammatory effects. I heard this a lot, I heard it from orthopedic doctors I talked to about it, because they don't want to change their world. You know, right now they're making a living off of taking the knees out, and they spend a lot of time training how to do knee surgery, removing the knees, getting them into physical therapy, getting them on drugs, doing the 13 years of hyaluronic acid injections beforehand, building insurance for that. Now we have a treatment we can do like one time and get them better, much more consistent. This is a study called, uh, it was looked, there was a patient that had a large osteochondral defect from osteochondritis desiccans. That's a condition where it occurs in younger people where the cartilage gets uh, inflammation and it dies away. And this guy had a, a piece of cartilage missing the size of a postage stamp, so he had pain. And he had seven operations, seven orthopedic operations with various devices put in and, and splints put in and it didn't grow back. They did one injection of adipose-derived stem cells and grew back, grew back in two months, grow back. Size of post stamp, seven operations. They actually did a second treatment six months later, and they wrote in their discussion that they just did it because they thought it made sense, but they didn't know what they needed to because the guy felt good, but they had planned on it in advance of doing it twice because they told them it probably wouldn't work. And what about people who are saying, well, it's not even that cartilage that's growing? Well, what happens if we uh, did like MRIs or arthroscope and did a biopsy? Well, that's been done. It's been done a lot. You know, like there might be this criticism that in, in the one paper that said there was uh, potential for bias in these papers. Okay, well here they did uh, adipose-derived stem cells, they added uh, hyaluronic acid and platelet-rich plasma, okay, that's what we do commonly, and they did, they treated the patients and they repeated the PRP one time about three weeks later. They did an MRI uh, at three months and they saw a complete regeneration of the cartilage, a okay, complete regeneration of the cartilage. Another study done in, uh, this is 2008, and again, it's not new information. They did, they treated patients with uh, arthritis with stem cells, and they, uh, they called, they were called expanded stem cells, so these were from bone marrow, and they followed up with MRI, and they saw at 24 weeks, they had significant growth back of their meniscus and MRI, decreased pain, improved uh, morbidity. Uh, another study, this is done in uh, 2016, 16. In this one, they treated patients with arthritis with fat-derived stem cell. They did uh, 24 knees, and they followed them up for two years. Patients all had improvement in their symptoms. They did MRI, and they did scopes, and they did biopsies. And it was cartilage. Okay, it looks like cartilage, smells like cartilage, feels like cartilage. It's cartilage. We're growing back knee cartilage. Okay, we're growing it back. And there's going to be a lot of pressures to try to get us not to advance medicine, because for every Pioneer medicine, there are 1,000 self-appointed guardians of the past. We find that when we're doing the veins and the ugly legs that people want to continue wound care, it's a total waste of money. Doing step, knee replacement without trying stem cell is, I, I think, is inappropriate. Of course, we're doing it because people are worried insurance not covering it. I mean, big deal. You know, this is not expensive to do. And again, we spend $11 billion a year doing knee replacements on half the candidates. That's going to go up. And we spend $37,000 $37, a year just treating their knees for pain, right? We can just, we can just make it go away. Not 30,000 a year, I'm sorry, $35,000 in the 13 years prior to getting surgery.